Wow, it's amazing what you'll find when you go looking for trash. Hi, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to the shop. I'm cleaning out. I have a mission that we get two trash loads a week, and every week I fill the trash can completely full of stuff from the shop. Oh, after 40 years, something I looked at it the other day was 18,849 work days before I retired from in the construction business. 18,000, that's 51 years. Whoa. But I got into the shop and I started making things. And my mission was to just make and make and make and make and make. Really didn't think it all the way through. I want to talk about it being all the way through. My other system just went off. Well, I check on that. Why don't you do this? Watch. It just means one thing. No, it doesn't mean anything. It could be a squirrel, a mouse, a neighbor, the mailman. Oh, it's Martin Luther King Day. Happy Martin Luther King Day. It ain't the mailman. All right, what I found in the shop, what I have found in the shop, a bowl project. Pardon me, I got the hiccups. Bowl projects that I started years and years ago and just never finished them. I don't know why, but there's a pile of them. I mean, that's a nice piece of... Looks like to be mahogany. Might be cherry, but it might be mahogany. I'll get it done and find out. Um, another one here, I have no idea what it is, but see how it's finished out but not finished out? It's going to be hard to grab because I'll put too big a receiver in the back of it. I got another one. I know why this one didn't go anywhere, is they got the little hole in the, in the edge right there. That might not be real attractive. Unless you work with it. Oh. Yep, I'm working with it. Nice dish, deep little dish. And I've got some balls that are turned to some eggs that I found on the shelf back here that are working here really nice. Got those. And then the Coupe de Gras, I think that's Italian Coupe de Gras, is this little piece. And it is a piece of mahogany. But look how stained up it is. That's no visual effects or anything. This was acting as a catch basin under one of my grinders. You talk about going to be fun when we get to making this look good. A little bit of receiver in the back so we have to grab it. Well, we're going to talk about grabbing and holding because if you're going to turn something, first thing you got to do is hold it. So let's go to that, holding it. I'm going to use a couple of different chucks and rigs to hold things because not all wood turners have got the money to go out of pocket for an expensive chuck. But when you do, go all the way. I went one way. I did that 20 years ago. Never look back. In fact, this is the one. The first one I bought. This is a one-way strong hold chuck and I have number two profile jaws. Profile jaws or straight, the edge of the jaw right here is straight. There's no flutes and ridges and, and all that other stuff. I've got some of those right here somewhere. I'd get one up and show you the pros and cons. But essentially I'm talking about a good flat surface. And a good flat surface is going to work because I'm going to put this good flat surface, which is slightly undercut, which means it goes in a little bit. And that's going to fit in this notch perfectly. Why? Well, Chuck's in here, and I'm going to move. you got to move. You're in the wrong spot. Okay, I got you moved. Now, let's take a look at this. These are profile jaws. You see how there's no notches, no grooves. They're very straight. Dovetail. All right? Why? I like the holding power of all that metal. All that metal touching against my wood. And the metal I'm talking about is this metal right here, this face. My pencil, I got a pencil. This face and this face. Never this one. No way in the world that one. So it's this face and this face. These just right that's gotta be clean. Now how do you size it? Maybe you don't have a strong hold, you've got a barracuda or an apprentice. And some of those things are on recall right now, so 
That's because of snap-on things. All right. So remember, this is never a race. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I've closed mine up pretty close. Not exactly close. That is closed all the way. I'm going to open it just a little bit. All right. Now, that's just for the basis of setting up this. Now, this right here is my jig. And you can see the jig, it matches the outside diameter of that thing. Right there. The outside diameter matches that. Now the inside diameter matches the other notch. See how this is? Alright, I'll get it turned to you. Inside diameter, outside diameter. Don't worry about the other wings. So the outside diameter would be right there. That would line up perfectly. Now. What good is that for? Well, when I'm putting a groove in the bottom of my platter, when I'm holding it on the, on the, the screw jaws or whatever, or the Ron Best Longworth type chucker or whatever, then I gotta know what size to make this. Do I guess at it? No. I use my jig. Look at that. See how that is? That's the inside diameter. Or the outside diameter, which is the inside diameter. Never mind, it's just diameter. Right, you see how it matches up? Now, if I was going to do it on a tenon that sticks out, it'd be that size. It'd be smaller. I don't like tenon holding because the tenons, see, you tend to kind of taking a crapshoot at it. So, I like the socket, and I can make this into a decorative piece of the bottom. The tenon, i got to take completely off. This I can decorate. Now, I have this, and I have the tenon the right size. I'm going to put it on my... Now, see how nice that went? I didn't fight it, didn't push it, nothing else. And all I do is give it about, now you can see, a good turn. And I've got on about 200 RPMs. Look at that. That has got a date on it that puts it six years old. It's been sitting in its unconditioned shop for six years. Hanging around waiting on me to get better so I can come back and turn again. And if you missed that news flash, I had a stroke caused by a brain bleed, caused by a brain tumor, caused by being stupid. The stupid had a lot to do with it. But I got over it and I came back. And like they say, it ain't a matter of if you can bounce back, it's how high you can bounce. I'm fat as I am, I don't bounce much. But hey, here we are. We're in it, and look at this. I want, I want to slow this up so you can really see it. Pull the length over the uh, control over a little bit. There we are. I want to slow it up. Look how true that's running. And it's a piece of mahogany. Really. I don't think you can ask for anything better than that. So, we've got it in, and we have it chucked up, and we're holding it, matter of spinning it. Now, I want to back up a little bit more. Suppose this wasn't six years old and I turned it yesterday, or this morning, or ten minutes ago, and I turned it using the Longworth chucks, which I'll show you in a little while. I'll tell you what, I want to use Ron Brown's best Longworth type chuck, because it's really cool for you to see it. You can build your own, but I can't do that one of the machine moves just yet. It's coming. <clears throat> it's like the table saw almost went away last week, but we've got hope. The therapist says that'll come back too. All right, now, I have it in here. I turned it the other way and put the, gro the groove in the bottom of it. Now I want to turn it around and put the dish into it. It's plain and flat. When I turned it the first way and held it along as worth, I can show you pictures, maybe. And then I put this on and I cut that groove back here. Then, when I turn it around, bring it up here. I want to know some numbers. I want to know how thin my bottom is going to be because I can't go thinner than my bottom. Otherwise, I'm building a freaking saw, a, a funnel. Don't want that. And then I'm going to dish it out, and that allows me to have a little decoration time. Now, this is in really good shape, but... It's not fuzzed up like the other one, but it's got some stains on it. 
you know, and it's just saying, please, send me out and finish me, sir. Please, send me out and finish me. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to suit up, get rid of the skull cap, get on my safety glasses, put on my shield, go, 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 go. Or go, go, go. Let me show you something. See that little silver dot in the middle of this piece right there? There's one there. There's one there. What are those? Those are rare, rare earth magnets. Rare earth things. I get from KJ Magnetics. Why do I have rare earth magnet in here? Because I can just set it right there on the lathe. Or I can set it right here on the lathe. Or I can set it right here on the lathe. Or, and I don't have to worry about it being in a trash on the floor. Because it is Corian and it's not going to flex and move. You make a jig, make a permanent jig. Hey, the other day we were cranking up in the shop and I told you I had to take my safety glasses, put them off on the side because I didn't have any lens wipes for them. Well, not a prima donna, but these glasses cost, what, 50 bucks for a good pair of bifocal safety glasses? And if I clean them with the wrong device or wrong product, I'll end up scratching them and then it's buy another pair. So I'll clean with the right stuff. <clears throat> Same thing I use in my glasses, my iPad, and my um, other face things. These lens wipes. Yeah. Get them at Sam's. They work good. It's it's not there's not a lot of use to them, trust me. But it'll keep the, the 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 static attractness of them down. Yeah, I'm gonna call it that. And that's what I use them for. Safety glasses, shield. I'm rigged up, and I'm ready to start spinning this a little bit. Let me reposition you a little bitty bit. All right, because you don't need to look at my bug. You need to look at this. This is what we're gonna go with. That's spinning up at about. Uh, Five hundred RPMs. It's pretty quick. Take it down a little bit. There we go. Now to sand it, I'm going to use a self-powered sanding rig. Now this is something I have. See that? That's a bushing. In a bottom of that bushing, can you get a glimpse of it? There is a rare earth magnet around one in the bottom, and this is not hard to make. Takes a little drilling, a little turning, and mine's double ended. So I can go on this end, go straight, I come over here and go on an angle. The magnet keeps the pad in, and the pad is there to remove materials. Let's get something started. I'm a great fan of Vince Welch's sanding supplies. Vince's woodwonders.com. There's some people trying to knock that name off, but don't go by that. Go by the vents, right? I use a Velcro pad, Velcro paper. Hold on. I want to put a, a pad between them. To make it, I'll explain that. Hold on. The pad I'm talking about going between them, that's a rather hefty, staunch pad, or hard. Right? I'm going to put a softer pad on it in between them. See the softness? You can't see the softness, but uh, look, I'm telling you, it's soft. It's softer than that yellow pad, and I'm going to put my sanding pad on the face of that. Now, what did I do? I created a surface that wasn't as rigid, uh, so I can go around these curves and not reconfigure them. And that's where I'm going to start right now. Shield up. I'm 
get a double action on the stranding. I'm going round and round to scar vertical, but I'm going back and forth while, while it's turning in order to do a horizontal. Combination, I'm getting a squirrel. I'm removing the material, and I'm not scarring the material so hard, and I'm not leaving heavy, heavy grooves. And because of the softness of the pad, I'm conforming to the shape that I already had. I now have it sanded on the face and on the back two inches of this edge to a 220 grit. Very happy with it. It's kept on sanding. It never did burnish. See how the paper's not loaded up so it didn't burnish it. You can burnish with almost any grit if it loads up. So I went to 220, then I went to my boxes and I found me some, some paper. And I'm a terrible salesman for Vince Wooden's Wonders. Really am. Because I can tell you that if you get the paper and you take care of it, it'll last forever. It will. But you got to start with good stuff. But I, I go to my Winn-Dixie and I get these containers. Now this this is a Ziploc and unscrewed thing and I can put the date in case it expires. Hey. I got 280, 320, and 400 in these containers. Why? Well, I don't I don't need to keep them flat and, all, and separate. I just want to know where they are when I need them. And I got that and they don't get wet, they don't get torn up and they don't end up on the floor. They end up on the floor here, they're going to have the trash can. So, alright, now what did I go up to? I went to 280. Let's gear up and go. <clears throat> what have we done? We've sanded this using a non-powered sander. And this is my non-powered sander. And I sell on our website, we sell this bushing and bearing. And they come in a kit. Bushing bearing, bushing bearing, you get one of each, just one set. And uh, you make your own handle. You can make it longer, shorter, stubbier, round, or grab your hand, whatever. Uh, it works well for me. I put these marks in there so you can see that it was spinning when it was spinning. But the I've had guys come in and say, oh man, you know what I've got? I went to Harbor Freight and got one of these air powered things that. You can put that bit in it. That's nice. In fact, I know people that make the sanding supplies that love them. Why? Because when you hit that thing at 100 pounds of, pee, 100 pounds of pressure on that air, that little disc goes zoom, across the room and you get to replace the disc. <clears throat> or you overcut. Don't have to. This is done by inertia and it's really, really neat. And, and for a guy that came from above mom dump talking about inertia, we really know what we're talking about. This is my half, half, half and half. This is death sanding sealer. I cut it 50-50 with lacquer thinner. Turn it on. Bring it down speed a little bit more. Right there. This is a scrap of paper towel. This again is my blue wonders I get from Home Depot. I want to do this and show you something. See it? Went that way. I'll get that back. A minute ago, I started putting it on like this, rubbing it in, and that piece is fairly dry, and it spun the disc out of my hand and put it over there. It's still over there. Like I said, if it's a floor, it's a trash can. All right, but I stopped, I thought about it, and I said, okay, now, that's a Wonder Boy move. That's where you see him on. YouTube do it and see it. I wonder why the hell he's doing it that way. Well, that really was a Wonder Boy move. So, what I did was stop the lathe, just like this, and I put it on a pad and I massaged it in. And built up the first coat of sealer, just like that. I didn't have to have it under power. I didn't have to be a speed demon. I didn't have to show off and be a, a ooh, look what I can do. No, that wasn't part of it. It was Look how this is coming out. Now, I'm going to roll it slow. See? That. The light. 
My camera, my lens didn't move. My light didn't move. Look. Look at it. Watch it. That, boys and girls, is called Chateauians. And it's coming out because we allowed it to. We're not over scratched. We're not torn up. We're just sealing a natural piece of wood. Now, at this point, right now, I can take it, I can move this light around a little bit. You can't see me moving that light around. I move the light around a little bit and look for any glints or sparkles or shines. Because right now, if I've got a little flat spot right here, or a tear, or a pull out, it's going to show up when I rotate this very slowly. See the flash I got? Now, I don't see any tears. I don't see any... This thing cut really nice. I probably scraped the hell out of it when I was getting it done. It cut nicely, and it's got a great finish on it. Well, that's not the finish. That was sealer. I'm going to go ahead and get the OB Shine Juice, and put a little Shine Juice on it. And build up the finish on the face of this thing real quick. Oh, I, love, I do like how this is coming out. I do like it. And I found it in the trash pile. I've got two good coats of sealer on here. And I buffed it out a little bit with, with um, the Scotch Bright pads. See, these are my Scotch Bright pads. And I've got a gray, a brown one, a tan one, felt rough. And I ran that, and you can do this under power or stand still. I'm just not going to fuzz and to build up off to make sure I've got a good surface. Then I'll go to the lighter one, which is yellow. Check it one more time. See, I can hear some little fuzz on it coming up. And then it's gone. And that's what I'm looking to do. And I can't forget to do that back shoulder. Because we're doing the first third of that back here. When I grab it, I won't be able to do it again. Now I could do the the soft, soft one, but 90% of what I want is now gone. And I'm ready to go to OB Shine Juice. OB Shine Juice is very simple. A great old guy, one of my mentors, showed me how to use this a long time ago. It is one-third, here, here you go, one-third Bald linseed oil, the product. One third clear shellac. One third denatured alcohol. One third, one third, one third. Then I have it mixed up in this ball jar and I apply it with the paper towel again. Never a rag. I put some on a cloth, and then I go to lapping it in. Watch like a miracle. You see the difference in the texture of the wood come out? Because it's starting to build up a surf, starting to build up a finish. Now I take a little bit at a time. The beauty of finishing is you got to know when to start, and when to stop. And I'm going to work it in there real slow, not under power, just work it in. I can see all the spots, the highs, the lows, the irregulars. I can concentrate on them and make sure it's it's in the wood, not in my finish. And I'm going to build up this OB Shine Juice. A gentleman named OB Lacoste out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Many of y'all know him. He was an awesome turner. Started when he was in his 60s after he had a stroke. He got the turning. And he mastered the art in no time at all. And I mean, he mastered the art. So I'm going to build this up. Look at the chatoins in it. Look at the fleck. Look at the reflection. Oh, it's awesome. I'm going to build this up real slow without power, and then I'm going to power the machine and put a couple of finish coats on it. Now, I want power and I've put a, a does for about five minutes now. And what I'm doing is building up a finish. What am I building up? All right, think about what I put in here. Ball linseed oil is the vehicle that moves it. This, this white shellac or clear shellac. It's not the white stuff you put over the paint stains on the wall. It's clear shellac. Four pound cut. Don't worry about that. Get it out of the can. And I put that on this pad. And this is a piece of face 
of a blue paper towel and then I want to rub it in. What is going to happen? Well, it's elementary, my dear, elementary. I am using the shellac to build a coat. All right, and I'm going to move the shellac to a level surface using the bald linseed oil. And I can use uh, uh, several oils, all kinds of nut oils. I don't like the smell of some of the other ones, but I've done really good with maple and soy and a couple of other things. But I like I like the, the linseed oil. And then the alcohol that's been gone for ten minutes. That comes in, they'll break everything down and move it around, and it, it's gone. Don't put a match to it. Don't try to dry it. Don't do that. Don't do any of that. It's all BS. Put on by these dancers on the, on, the, on the internet. So what I've done is taken a platter. You saw that was kind of blood, blood, blood ugly, and I have put a good finish on the face of it. Now, this is a soft finish. Soft. <clears throat> Not soft hard not hard it is a soft finish it will mar it will de it will take stains it will water go through it so what would I do to this well <clears throat> not today because we're going to do something else we're going to turn around in a minute and finish the bottom but I would coat this with CA super glue or spray on polyurethane and let it lay out nice and flat that would give me a harder surface to work with it depends on what you want to see for density of the wood. If you need the density of the wood to talk to you, you got to go a lighter coat. If you just want it to be shiny, go a heavy coat. It's okay. Let's flip flop it. Flipping and flopping. Put a little pause waiting for the air compressor to catch up on us. I'm ready to flip flop it. I told you that, alright? Now, and boss is looking for me, so I'm going to have to go to the phone. Taking this off the, 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 the one way. Now that's it. Now that is an acceptable product right now without the top finish. But I want you to look at no marks, no tears, no rudge, no rud rudges? Rudge? What's a rudge? Um, I don't have that little high spot in the belly when I went around to cu cut it because I used the, or or the, the sander and in that mode going across I took that out the bottom of it. Took it out and I cleaned up that edge a little bit, cleaned up that. Got those stains off the back corners. This looks pretty good. It's to me acceptable. Now, I need to hold it, turn it around the other way. This is something I got from Ron Brown. This is Ron Brown's best. And this is his version of an Ellsworth. Now, I sell the parts and pieces for you to build your own Ellsworth jig, uh, just like this. And this is. Ron's version, and I'm holding it in my one-way stronghold jaws. Now, that is a holding rig. Now, if you don't know Ron, if you don't know Ron Brown, you don't know a character. You don't know a whiz, because, man, he comes up with some stuff. He really does. Always have a little Ron Brown money when you go to the cons consortiums and symposiums, because Ron Brown's got some stuff. Really does. I always buy something from Ron. This is my super duper bowl saver. All right, this is. Hold on, management's busting busting at me. I got more bosses and cards. Got liver pills. All right, this is what I use to protect the piece I've turned a few minutes ago. Okay, this is that shelf line you can get at Home Depot. It comes in all kinds of thickness and colors and everything. I like the green. It goes with my equipment. Get over it. Um, this will keep me from marking up what I already have a finish on. I'm going to take it put it on there. Watch how exact this is. Put it on there. I'm going to loosen up these wing nuts on the back so the piece has a chance to roll. And there's eight stubs on here. And then, if I was smart, I'd bring my center up, put my center on it, will mark right there. But smart ain't one of the things I got going for me today. So I'm going to. I have no choice. You know, some days, best laid plans. All right. I had to bring my tail stock up. I didn't really want to do it that way. Then I got to thinking about the smart move is bring it up, 
I have my soft touch on my spinning center right there. That's my soft touch. And I brought that up made contact with this. Then I'm going to move these jaws around to where I can... That's open. This is closed. Move the jaws around. Make contact with that ball face. I don't want to be too loose because I don't want to have it get over the top of it. I want it to be touching the edge of it. There are a couple of ways to do that with this type of piece, uh, with this type of gouge. I'm sorry, this type of chuck is to add a fiber washer between this face and this washer. Let's see if I can get in there. Right here. I put a fiber washer in there to get this to stand off a little bit, but also have a protected backing on it so that I can put it against the fiber washer and I don't make contact with the rest of the piece. That's one way. The other is just take my time, get them closely to the right tension, which is just down, but they don't move a little bit. See? Down, down, down. And then I'm going to play with the, the edges and get the lock down on here a little bit. I'm going to snug these up about a half a turn on each one until I get them all pretty snugged up. I don't want to overdo it. Remember your daddy taught you how to change a flat tire and never overdo one of the lugs and then want the rest of them to match it? Well, that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to do the same thing here. I brought this around. This works really good. Now, Ron's got a donut chuck out right now. Same type of material. A different configuration where you stack them and all that. I have to have one of those. I have to have one. I missed them this year at the show and they didn't get to buy it from them. But I won't miss them next time. I'm going to trim some of these ends off so I don't have all the stuff sticking out, and then we're ready to go. I have it set up. I've done my test spin. I see everything's going around. I cut those ends off because I don't want to have all that flapping out here to be a distraction to me. Uh, I get easily distracted. Right girl walks by, I can't go for that five, ten minutes. Now, there's a speed restriction on this. I don't ever think I want this to be over a thousand RPMs. I don't see any need for it to ever be there, but I have it up right now at about 300, 350. I'm going to shield up and get out my cutting gouge. Now I have my, you can see it, you can't, see it's not moving right there. That's my soft touch. My soft touch is my, my, my warranty. That's it. Put a little bit of soft touch on it, make sure I don't have any chatter or movement, and it's sitting firmly in the, the, the chuck. Then I start taking my slicing cuts. Three-eighths inch Ellsworth type gouge.
fine-tuned that bottom to be a very slight, slight depression. I didn't want to funnel because that's tapering this way, going that way. It's fairly hollow or shallow thin. Got it all back. I got my little bead on the edge. I'm ready to start sanding this out now. I'm going to start again at 220. Uh, I had to go a little bit harder, maybe 180. Clean up this edge a little bit, sand this. I'm going to take it all the way up to 400 again. Got it? Got it. Do you really need to watch me sand? I didn't think so. Now we're all on the same page. I have now sanded it to 400, just like a little while ago. And I went back to my OB Shine juice. Very easy to concoct. No magic here. The magic was in the old man, OB Lacoste, that taught me how to use it. And really, he, he didn't teach me how to use it. He proved to me that it was a good thing. We've been using the cabinet shop since I became a cabinet maker. Some 50 years ago, 51 years ago. Okay. I'm going to rub in the shine juice. I want to do it without power. Rub in a coat or two and then buff it. <coughs> hey, let me tell you, if you're doing it on the edge like this, I'll stop it. And you come up too high, your fingers are going to bump into those little bumpers up there. And someone once told me, that hurts like hell, especially in the winter time when that big pinky is still cold, All right? Don't get too crazy. All you do is get crazy. So I just got a couple of coats on it now. This is really looking good. I kind of like the way we got this done. To pull this out of my brown brown best Longsworth type chuck. I'm going to loosen up all the buttons and the faces will move. But I don't want to drop this, so there we go. We'll pull it right out. Now, I can tell you there's a little dirt on here, a little dust dropped in the back of it that went through. But all in all, we have a fairly good looking piece of material. This was from the scrap pile. And we dished the back a little bitty bit. I didn't put a definite edge and I rounded off that little foot just to break. The, the shape as I hit the table because when you look at it this way you don't want to see the hard lines. This is not a hard line, it's not a hard line. Remember, there's no rule. It's pleasing to your eye. Now, all in all, this has got a good finish on it. I would really prefer to have it shine in a little bit better, so I'm probably going to buff it up a little bit more and let the OB Shine Juice cure for a day. It does cure. Then I'm going to take it over to the buffer and buff it a little bit. If I like that finish, I'm going to stick with it. If I don't like it, I'll try something else and I'll show you what we do. But that treasure from trash. All right. I'm Captain Eddie Castle. Oh, today we talked about how to make a hand uh, your own self-powered sander. I have those parts on my website at www.eddiecastellan.com. I we'll talked about Ron Brown's best, and I'll put a link to Ron Brown in here someplace. Oh, with that right here. He'll put a line up to Ron Brown. Talk about the pad coming from Home Depot. This, the OB Shine Juice, the formula we gave to, to you a little while ago. Handful of tips and hits we threw in there today as we could. All right. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I've been to the shop, and I've been making shavings. Get out and make your own. I do like this though. I really do. And when I look down through it, you see, you see, do you do you see reflection of the dip? Do you see? Aha! It's flat. I hate seeing plates and platters with that mold or that depression or that in the center. That's why God made sandpaper. Oh, he told you how to cut it right too. <laughs>